Well, now we're joined by Sean Bailey, a former special advisor to the Prime Minister on Youth and Crime, who stood as a Conservative candidate in the last general election. Also with me, Stuart Lawrence, the brother of Stephen Lawrence, who was killed in a racist attack. Last year, Stuart lodged a racism complaint against the Metropolitan Police after being stopped and searched a good number of times. How many times? 25, off, off, just off my recollection. Um, we haven't been able to uh, get a definitive figure on that, but 25, because I, I worked it out, like ha how many times I was stopped uh, in my and younger just days. Just describe what happens when you're stopped and searched. Um, I mean, give me an instance that happened to you. Sure, uh, the usual instant is uh, I live in South East London, uh, driving, it's usually of an evening, uh, and stopped and suddenly asked, uh, is this your car? Do you have any proof of details, etc.? When I've asked the reason why I've been stopped, uh, there's been an incident in this area. Uh, your car matches the description, or you match the description. This is the reason why I'm stopping. Is it aggressive? Um, nine times out of ten, no. no. Nine times out of ten, it's not. Uh, I heard a few occasions where it has been mm. a bit more forceful and a bit more aggressive, but yeah, nine times out of ten, it's not. Sean Bailey, I mean, what, have you ever been stopped and searched? A great deal of times. Really? Yeah. But you, you were serious, Mr Strait, running as a Conservative MP and all that. I come from Laverick Grove. I'm a youth worker. I spend a lot of time on the street. You get stopped. It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's unnecessary. But there's two sides to the stop and search. It sends the message that the police are about. It needs to be done more equitably, though. And, and what the Home Secretary was aiming for was giving the police the need to do it in a way that the public can accept. If you see what the Metropolitan Police have done, they've realised how wrong they've got it in the past and have gently tried to wind it down. I think this was going to be a message from the top to say we're going to put you in a position because there's, a, there's, a, there's an added thing of public mm. safety, public concern about the police. Well, now, the... the the magistrate who investigated your brother's killing yeah. concluded that the police were institutionally racist. Yeah, Are they still? Uh, there's still some elements of it. I, I'm, I'm here trying Is to... Is that the problem? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I think, uh, yes, the pro the, the, there's still people still there and you know, over time we hopefully will mm. get rid of those people. But I do still feel like there's, there's an influx of new people coming through as well and we need to ensure sure, through training and proper guidance that if these people hold these type of views, they're held accountable to. Well, now that we, we, we detect some, as we reported, a bit of a division between the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister in this, uh, as a result of the question of how to deal with the fact that, you know, a quarter of 1.2 million stop and search arrests were unlawful. So, do you think the Prime Minister should actually make a statement about what's going to be done? I think the Prime Minister should, but I think the Prime Minister is cautious because what he doesn't want is to have any backpedalling. So he has to make sure that if there's a, if there's a law change, it stays changed. And remember, he and the Home Secretary are both responsible for police morale, which is a very important thing for everybody. But in a sense, they're both correct because the Home Secretary is saying, I want to give the police a lead on what they should and shouldn't be doing. And you don't want to leave the police open to lots of challenges because of illegal stops. But the PM is saying we need to look at how they are trained as well because what makes the stops really onerous is when you're dealt with incorrectly. But as a Tory, you must be worried that I mean, unless this thing is straightened out, they are not going to push the ethnic vote bigger than the 16% you got last time. It's two things I'd say. It's, it's offensive to believe that all of all black people are concerned with, with is, is being stopped by the police. We are not trouble. There's more to our, our civic life than that. What will make the police force effective for everybody is not wasting their time. And if you look, look at the stats around stop and search, there's been a lot of time wasted. Right. That was one of the Home Secretary's main points. Do you detect any real change? Um, no, not really, I'm afraid to say, because... But there's a, there is an a, a, a Afro-Caribbean um, head of the force up there in Yeah, Tottenham. no, definitely, and, and it takes That's more... progress, isn't it? Of course, it's a little bit of progress. We need more black and um, ethnic minorities to join the police force. But I was asking myself this question, was, which is, why would you want to? If, yeah, would if, you ever? I, I wouldn't, I'm afraid to say. I've, um, why not? Just... But, but I can tell you why you should. The reason you should join the force is to change. I'm more interested in why you wouldn't. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, it's about culture, isn't it? Okay, cool. I, I, I lived next to someone. I lived next door to my next door neighbour when I was growing up as a policeman. Mm. Uh, I just immediately moved from a black policeman. No, a white. Policeman. A white policeman. A white policeman. Right. policeman. And I just immediately uh, moved from Peckham to Hearn Hill. And one of my neighbours that lived in Peckham, he's a policeman, and his wife was around my house recently, saying to me the reason why he joined was because she kept imploring him to say, "Come on, you can't complain about you know these differences not happening without." you taking a stance yourself but you know I've had a case against uh, a police officer who stopped me recently and um, put a complaint into the IPC and that hasn't been upheld even though the IPC said there was some wrongdoing there and my question to myself is if I'm trying to say to myself okay we're moving forward things are changing then 
what is really being done. These things are not being changed. Well, I'm afraid that's the question we're going to have to leave in the air tonight. But Stuart Lawrence, thank you very much indeed for coming in. And Sean Bailey too. Cathy.